Glory to the Triune God Almighty. Sri M. Apau, Honorable Speaker of Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly. Mr. Peter Alphonse, Honorable Chairman, Tamil Nadu State Minority Commission. His Grace Kivarish Mar Felixinos, Metropolitan Diocese of Madras. His Grace Yuhan and Mardi Skoros, former Metropolitan of Madras Diocese. Other respected brother bishops, Father Thomas Vargis Amil Priest Trustee, Mr. Roni Vargis Lay Trustee, Advocate Bijuman, Association Secretary Father Thomas Isaac, Secretary of the Diocese of Madras. Marriage Committee members of the Church, esteemed guests, respected members of the clergy, Reverend Father Ninu, member of the Marthoma Orthodox Marthoma Syrian Church, faithful members from sister churches and our beloved children of the Malangara Orthodox Church from Madras Diocese and from other parts of India. Greetings to you all in the precious name of the Triune God. Today we gather in deep reverence and immense joy to commemorate the 1950th anniversary of the martyrdom of Saint Thomas, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. Saint Thomas holds a special place in the history of Christianity in India, teaching us valuable lessons about faith and the transformative power of encountering the risen Lord. St. Thomas, one of the twelve apostles, ventured far from his homeland to bring the message of love, peace and salvation to the people of India. His arrival on the shores of this great nation was a profound moment marking the beginning of Christianity in this diverse and vibrant land. St. Thomas' journey reflects the universal nature of faith, transcending borders and cultures, as he embraced the richness of India and shared the teachings of Jesus Christ. There are References to St. Thomas' presence in India in various historical documents and travelogues of those who visited our country. One of the earliest accounts comes from the Acts of Thomas, an apocryphal text believed to have been written in the 3rd century AD. It narrates the journey of St. Thomas to India and his missionary activities here. Furthermore, there are later accounts and writings by several travelers and historians who mention St. Thomas and the Christian communities in India. For example, the Greek geographer and astronomer Ptolemy in his work, Geography, 2nd century AD, refers to a place called Barigasa on the western coast of India which is associated with the arrival of St. Thomas. The writings of the fathers of the church like St. Ephraim, 4th century, 
and the Syrian Christian Chronicle and Bishop Jacob of Edessa, 7th century, also mentioned St. Thomas and his activities in India. Additionally, the 13th, 13th century Italian traveler Marco Polo noted the existence of Christian communities and, and a shrine dedicated to St. Thomas in India during his travels. While these references provide some historical support for St. Thomas present in India, it is important to note that the available evidence is not extensive or conclusive. The accounts often rely on traditions, legends and later narratives, making it challenging to establish an entirely accurate historical record of St. Thomas' arrival and activities in India. But the reliable fact of the historical evidence of St. Thomas' tradition in India is none other than the life and history of St. Thomas Christians who have been living in South India since the first century AD. The Christian community who has been living for centuries here in South India is the living monument of the historicity of the arrival of St. Thomas here in India. The St. Thomas Christians, also known as Syrian Christians or Nazaranis, have indeed made significant contributions to Indian nationalism and social development. Here are a few notable aspects. What about the historical presence? St. Thomas Christians trace their roots back to the arrival of St. Thomas, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ in the first century. This long-standing presence establishes their historical connection and indigenous identity in India. What about our cultural synthesis? St. Thomas Christians played a crucial role in facilitating cultural synthesis between Indian and Christian traditions. They integrated local customs and practices with Christianity, creating a unique blend of faith and culture that influenced the wider society. How are we involved in education and literacy. St. Thomas Christians were pioneers in promoting education and literacy in Kerala, where most of them reside. They established schools and educational institutions that contributed significantly to the spread of education among the local population. What is our role in social reforms? St. Thomas Christians actively participated in social reform movements. They advocated for the abolition of untouchability and caste-based discrimination, promoting equality and social justice in their community. In this context, we have to remember the tireless work of most ever Bishop Atros Marostadius uplifting the poor. Which are our contributions to Indian nationalism? Many St. Thomas Christians actively participated in the Indian freedom struggle against British colonial rule. They joined national movements, took part in protests, and contributed to the development of Indian nationalism. 
what is our political engagement saint thomas christians have been involved in politics both at the regional and national levels several prominent political leaders from the community have made significant contributions to the governance and policy making in india we had our orthodox sons like former congress leader cm stephen former tamil nadu governor sri p c alexander and the former chief minister of kerala umman chandi these are just a few examples of the contributions made by saint thomas christians to indian nationalism and social development their historical legacy and active involvement continue to shape the cultural educational and social fabric of india how was saint thomas the proclaimer of the apostolic faith saint thomas was devoted was a devoted follower of jesus walking alongside him during his earthly ministry witnessing his miracles and hearing his profound teachings he even encouraged other disciples to go to bethany and die with jesus however it was after jesus crucifixion and resurrection that thomas encountered crisis of faith when his fellow disciples joyfully proclaimed that they had seen the risen lord thomas also wanted to believe him by seeing his body resurrected he and for tangible proof desiring to to see and touch the wounds of jesus in our own lives skepticism can sometimes creep into our hearts challenging the foundations of our faith we may question god's plan struggle to understand his ways or find it challenging to believe in miracles and promises saint thomas doubt is a reminder that these struggles are not unique to us but have been experienced by even the closest followers of jesus it is in this context that jesus appeared to thomas gently inviting him to touch his wounds and dispel his doubts thomas doubt transformed into unwavering faith as he declared my lord and my god this encounter with the risen christ led thomas to a profound realization that jesus was indeed the son of god the promised messiah how can his quest for seeking leads to profound faith beyond the quest of reasoning which can influence us through thomas story we are reminded that the quest of seeking when approached with humility and genuine desire for truth can be a catalyst for deepening our faith it is crucial to acknowledge and explore our doubts seeking answers and guidance through prayer study and fellowship as we wrestle with questions we open our eyes to the possibility of encountering the truth and experiencing the transformative power of Christ's presence in our lives saint thomas journey did not end with doubt but became a testimony of faith as he courageously spread the gospel to a distant land india proclaiming the message of christ's love and more the uh, uh, and his ministry serves as an inspiration for us to boldly share our faith despite our doubts and insecurities trusting in power of the holy spirit to work through us 
what is the significance of christian witness in this pluralistic indian society the malangara orthodox church tracing its roots back to the apostolic era has played a pivotal role in preserving and propagating the teachings of saint thomas we take pride in our rich heritage and the contributions of our forefathers who nurtured the faith amidst various challenges today the malangara orthodox church stands as a beacon of light spreading the message of christ love embracing the principles of inclusivity and uphold upholding the traditions that have been passed down through generations as indians we take pride in the indigenous character of the malangara orthodox church even though we have imbibed certain elements of syrian liturgical tradition the church is fully independent in the administration and autocephalous in nature our rituals have common elements with the syrian worship which are also being indigenized with elements of our own culture our church has peacefully coexisted with all other religions of this land for the last 2000 years our country has a rich history of religious harmony and tolerance rooted in its diverse cultural fabric and pluralistic traditions this is a land of diverse religions languages and cultures where pluralism has been celebrated for centuries saint thomas presence and his christian witness remind us of the importance of harmony and mutual respect among different faiths he exemplified the values of tolerance understanding and coexistence setting an enduring example for generations to come in the tapestry of india's pluralistic society saint thomas message resonates deeply urging us to embrace unity amidst our beautiful diversity what is the significance of fraternity in the midst of growing secularism as our nation embraces the principles of secularism the spirit of fraternity becomes even more essential saint thomas life teaches us the value of fostering bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood transcending religious cultural and social barriers in an era marked by divisive forces it is crucial to promote inclusivity dialogue and mutual respect let us draw inspiration from saint thomas legacy and work together to build a society where all citizens strive with dignity regardless of our faith here we would like to underline that along with the life of religious piety malagara orthodox church has always been at the forefront of humanitarian initiatives our commitment to serving the marginalized and the needy is rooted in the teachings of christ through various initiatives including educational in institutions hospitals and social welfare programs we have strived to uplift the society and bring about positive change in the land as we come up with the martyrdom of saint thomas let us renew our commitment to continue these noble endeavors and make a difference in the lives of those in need in line with apostle thomas who listened to the cries of the poor and took risk to help them by the treasures of the parthian king gondophorus which was been entrusted with him for building an earthly palace for the king whereby he was able to build a palace in heaven for the king we are honored to be joined today by esteemed guests 
who have graced this occasion with their presence, Sri Emma Pau, Speaker of the Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly, and Mr. Peter Alphonse, Chairman of the Tamil Nadu Minority Commission, says, on behalf of Malangara Orthodox Church, we extend our gratitude for sparing your valuable time. The government of Tamil Nadu, along with the civil society organizations, plays a crucial role in promoting religious harmony. Various initiatives and schemes are implemented to preserve and protect the religious heritage of the state while ensuring the rights and freedom of all communities. The peaceful coexistence of the religions in Tamil Nadu can be attributed to the mutual respect and tolerance practiced by its people. Tamil Nadu stands as a shining example of how diverse religious traditions can coexist peacefully, enriching the cultural and social fabric of the state. Orthodox Church has a strong presence in Tamil Nadu along with historical churches and Christian communities spread across the state and we have made significant contributions to the education, health care and social services emphasizing the values of love, compassion and service in this land. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to the Madras Diocese for organizing this momentous event led by His Grace Giburgis Mar Felixinos, the Metropolitan of the Diocese, the Diocesan Council and various members of the Madras Diocese, which has worked tirelessly to ensure the success of this historical event. Their dedication and commitment to the cause of commemorating St. Thomas' martyrdom is commendable. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to all the distinguished guests, clergy and faithful, members of who have contributed their time and effort to make this event a resounding success. Today, as we stand at the tomb of St. Thomas, let us honor his memory by reaffirming our commitment to the ideals he espoused. May his example inspire us to build bridges of understanding, promote harmony, and work towards a brighter future for all. Sahodari, Sahodarangle, Marthoma Shlihaide, Paidriga Parimidetil, Marthoma Shlihaide, Simhasana Timel, Arudan Ayrikina, our Kadu, Pavarese Kadu Likaula, Logatile Ega Sapa, Malangara Orthro Suriani Safe, Adil Namalapimani Kimbol. Apidav in the Kalla Devil Pindudarna, E. India, Namuda Kail, Tandirikinu, Apidav and Orta, Inde, Ella Taratilum, Samuhemayim, Sam Sahadiri Delam, Sahai Kim, Vidyabia Sarangatum, Adresh Sutra Sangatum, Namude, Kairigan Nitande Avisham, Adinda Kala Madikramajirikin and Orta, Namakadil. Sandoshikam, Adil Namukha, Pradini Edakam, Adil Kuril Provartikan, Sanatari Munu Duram, Devan Ningle Leverim, Walti and Ingrekat. <laughs>